first order of business is the minutes. Um, I, I'd like to correct a couple of mistakes that uh, Grant Gibbian pointed out. Okay. In Article 27, the vote should have been 900,000. That's Article 27? Yeah. Uh, the third item. Okay. The other side, on the back side, under water distribution, it says 7,225,117. It should say 177. Okay. Okay, are there any other corrections on the minutes? Dean? On other matters? Um, I guess the first one I'm not sure about. It says Arlington may get 718000 from state to fix potholes. I don't remember the number being that high. That does seem very high to me also. And then UGART would like to build a large 40B housing development, not 20B. 40B. Thank you. Thank you. And why don't you just say Arlington may get some funds from the state to fix potholes. I can't remember what the number was, but I agree. That's that's a lot of money. I thought it was 118. I'm sorry? 118. 118. Okay. 118. You just yeah. stopped by. Okay, so put in 118. Okay, are there any other corrections? Um, on the top, the rescind voting, I'm just wondering if it would be better to say uh, rescind borrowing. The Thompson accounts are not yet closed, and I would just add the words, and thus should not be rescinded yet, and then delete the next line. About the treasurer, I don't think it really adds anything. And then under Minuteman, Article 28, uh, voted to reconsider the vote, oh, of March 2nd. That's, sorry, misunderstood. Okay, is there any other corrections on the minutes? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to accept the minutes as corrected. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay, Gloria, could uh, this is the budget for the Arts and Cultural Center. Uh, it was added to the Warren article, but you know everybody looked at the Warren article and said it's the same Warren article we always had, and we missed it. So uh, they are now before us. Have a seat right here. Thank you. Okay. I'm Barbara Costa. This is Stephanie Marlin Curiel. We are co chairs. And I believe you have um, the breakdown, the, um, the breakdown right. but you don't have any pros that goes with it. I'm nope. going to just describe it. By the way, it's on the back of one of the handouts. I tried to save paper. So it's on the back of the uh, Human Rights Commission. Did you have specific <coughs> questions, or do you want me to explain why we did what we did? Okay, why don't you give a brief description? And okay. This is our first budget. We've been in existence uh, with the meeting since 2013. Um, and we've kind of gone along with zero budget. And um, a couple people, uh, you know, we've obviously paid out of pocket for things like getting a website going. We got a, a volunteer, um, does a fabulous calendar. It's going to get better with time. But it's, um, and she does her, her time is totally free. We still have her, luckily. But there are costs that we um, anticipate. Um, and for example, um, we did try to go to the <coughs> Arlington Cultural Council, which gets money from the state, the State Cultural Council. Um, and they, we, we gave them a request for ways to cut our, what, we, what we're giving you now as a budget request. And they said, no, we won't do that. The town should be, they said the town should be um, covering those costs. So 
Um, we're um, basically charged, among other things, with coming up with a cultural plan for the town. You're aware of the master plan. Well, cultural plan will be following on its heels at some point. And, um, and that's where um, we have, I think, the biggest item, uh, a consultant, we feel, um, just having spoken to a similarly sized town, not that similar, but Natick, they used a consultant that was $4,500, took a couple of years, so we were thinking that would be on the order of what we would do. We're already starting right now to work without any consultants on a process of, of we're having a discussion this Thursday with various arts and culture organizations in town and businesses to consider having a, applying to the Mass Cultural Council for a, a cultural district designation, um, which I could describe, but the point being that it's a start to get the various organizations in town to talk about similar purposes and to create, to sort of bring every awareness of all the groups up by creating a, um, a more, a little bit more structure to, so that we can um, interact better and <coughs> people know about what's going on in town, because there are all these wonderful organizations and part of our, part of the commission's job is to let everyone know what exists in town already and to help it all along because we believe arts and culture enriches everyone. So, um, and then there were some uh, various other, uh, there's very spelled out items that we thought would be helpful to have, to have a tent at town day and take care of little uh, administrative costs as they come up. Uh, and I just wanted to add that that part of the, you know going through cultural district status and then a, having a cultural plan and and someone who can really um, you know help interview the, the all the organizations in town assess their needs and and figure out you know how best we can work together and create partnerships. Those are the kinds of partnerships that position us better for grants in the future from organizations like NIFA and from the MCC. New England, you know, uh, New England. Um, Foundation, for the, for, the Foundation arts, for the Arts, I'm sorry, for, so for, for larger amounts of money. So Adams can, Grants um, yeah. as well. And our town grants, mm -hmm. yeah. So this is, uh, I guess, is that everything we were going to Yeah, I'd just say, you know, that's, that really is our, our position in town. It's really what we've been charged to do, but we really do need some support to, to do these um, big, long-range projects for the town. So any questions? Okay, are there any questions from the committee? Paul? So why is it 50% of this total for the consultant? Uh, we're just spreading it over two years. So okay. we're doing 50% this fiscal year. Are you, uh, have you contacted or uh, working with the tourism committee? We are, yes. as a matter of fact. We are working with them. Um, they're co-sponsoring this meeting that we're putting together this Thursday. And we, so we are. Uh, Carolyn? What other organizations in town do you plan to collaborate with? Oh, there are many, but the Arlington Center for the Arts, the Arlington Historic um, Society, History, Historic Society, um, Old Schwan Mill, um, some businesses in all, all around the town. Um, oh, there, um, the the library. <laughs> Arlington Friends of the Drama, what did you say? Yeah, well, I mean, we have a yeah, list. Yeah, there's a very long list, but right. that gives you a sense of it. Yeah. We would, you know, we're trying to be totally inclusive, ultimately. Would you, do, uh, would you do things like trying to coordinate with uh, uh, the Region Theater or the uh, Arlington, or the, uh, uh, what's the thing Capital? on Academy Capital. Street? Oh, Arlington Friends of the Drama? Drama. Yeah. With local restaurants and get discounts and try to work with them together? Well, everything is possible. It's really just finding the thematic reasons to connect different um, organizations and businesses, and um, which is obviously ATED's mission, the, te the Tourism and Economic Development Group as well. Um, you know, we're charged to, uh, particularly to, um, to advise the Board of Selectmen. That's how we're different. From ATED, and we have, but we have a big overlap. Um, and yes, we would. Cultural district would be a big way to involve business and and arts and culture together. And I, I mean, discounts. Who knows? I'm sure people will come up with many ways to to link them. Because there is supposed to be a marketing plan in connection with the cultural district, and so that is that would probably fall under that marketing plan. Okay. Carolyn. So. Uh, you definitely get a miscellaneous item 
I don't know that you get to use it to buy refreshments. We don't even get our party paid for. But do other do other groups get to around town? Yeah, I assume so. As long as it's not alcohol. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there any other questions, Tom? I mean, I know this is kind of crazy, but I thought of it too. We don't even get like refreshments. And mm -hmm. That bothers me. The hundred dollars and uh, that would. Well, I think you get a miscellaneous item, but. Takes like refreshments, but we don't even get it. I, I, I agree what you're trying to do, but the like refreshments is just kind of like turning me off. Right? Well, it's not well, for us. I mean, it's for the public meetings that we're holding. Oh, oh yeah. Um, no, these, the, this, um, yeah. this process, of the cultural district process and the cultural plan process will involve several public meetings for the public, much the way the Arlington Public Art um, Committee started doing that when they were publicizing and you know doing some education around public art in town. So um, uh, that's what that's what that would be for. But you can call it miscellaneous, or we could get donations and yes, yeah, not know, for we, our meetings. We, we, that's what you mean. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, right. I'm not saying that. But okay. I, I have a problem paying for any type of whether it be mm -hmm. water mm -hmm. for a committee. That's my problem, mm -hmm. especially when we don't get. Right. All right. Then. That's there's just don't tell okay. there's several committees in town that get cokes and stuff like that are put away in refrigerators behind the scenes. Uh, that uh, so I, I think it does happen. Um, we all okay, get into our own pockets okay. largely anyway. It's just nice to know that there yeah. you know if there are some expenses we don't have to cover everything. Are there any other questions? I, I appreciate your completeness yeah. for, for telling us what miscellaneous is. So <laughs> it's, it's as we sent it to Adam, and this is our first budget. We hadn't had one before. Okay. Um, Arlington Public Art and the Chamber of Commerce, other big organizations we'll be working with. So. Okay, any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much for coming. We My appreciate pleasure. it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Take See care. you at town meeting. Uh, Okay. What's the will of the committee? I'm in favorable action. I'm sorry. in favorable action. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, moved and seconded uh, 431 to 60. Any further discussion? Dean? Uh, the only thing I'll point out is um, they, they can't submit their first two line items for reimbursement because they're prior year expenditures. So we should probably mention that to them just so they don't run into the pothole when they go talk to Ruth and feel silly over it. Yeah. So we just take, so should we? Well, no, I mean, you can keep it in there. I just don't want them to, you know, they, like they're starting up this committee, they're new, they're, yep. I don't want them to submit them to the comptroller and then feel like they got beat up. Yeah. Uh, Gloria, could you uh, give them a call afterwards uh, with our vote and mention the fact that they might have trouble getting reimbursed for prior year expenditures? By the way, I, uh, I suppose people have heard that uh, Ruth Lewis is uh, retiring. She is. Yeah, the cost us. <coughs> so uh, it's, uh, we're, we're losing a valuable town employee who's been here for many years, and uh, uh, that'll, be t that'll be too bad. But How much will her buyout be? I'm sorry? How What's much that will gonna her cost buyout us? be? I'm sure we'll find out. <laughs> um, There's not enough on Okay, <laughs> any further discussion? All those in favor of the 3160 for the uh, Arts Commission on Ar Art and Culture, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous. Okay, next is collective bargaining. Mr. Andrew. Now, who paid for that water there? <laughs> the, 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 this this oh, came no. from home, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm willing to share. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Andrew. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, what I'd like to do quickly is just uh, let you know what I provided uh, the committee with in terms of information tonight, uh, and then I'll walk through it um, and go through some of the details. So. Um, you should have a memo from me, um, which basically I'll begins by outlining what our strategy has been uh, in terms of um, conducting collective bargaining negotiations uh, since we began them back in September of 2014. 
Um, we've currently reached agreement with two of the unions, um, the Robbins uh, Librarians Professional Association and Local 1297, um, which is a fire union. Uh, I'll go through this in more detail. Uh, then I have a draft, Article 20, which does a couple of things. One, um, it proposes funding uh, the agreement with the Librarians Association, funding the agreement uh, with the firefighters, um, funding uh, cost of living increases with the M schedule employees and non union employees, um, funding uh, full time elected officials, uh, cost of living increases, and then lastly, um, basically setting aside the balance of the $700,000 that was included in the manager's budget uh, for future collective bargaining. Um, we're actively engaged with all the unions right now. Um, <clears throat> we hope to uh, reach agreement uh, in the coming months. Um, whether or not we'll get agreement with all the unions before town meeting, uh, I would go ahead and say it's probably unlikely at this point, um, but we're meeting uh, on a weekly basis across the board uh, and hopes making some progress. <clears throat> so with that, um, let me just walk through the memo uh, that I provided to the committee. Um, basically, our, our strategy and our approach uh, has been based on two principles. One, uh, providing cost of living increases that are consistent with historic CPI, which is about 2%. Um, we've applied that across the board. Uh, and then we have um, adhered to a commitment we made uh, with all the unions um, back in 2000, we began it in 2012 actually, meeting with the union um, and it continued uh, many, many months uh, until we actually uh, performed an actual um, compensation study for all town and school positions. Uh, one of the things we said, they were very actively involved in deciding who our comparable communities would be. Um, we took in a bunch of factors, some demographic information that's particular to each union, uh, and then a community <coughs> ability to pay. Um, and we came up with our, our com what we've referred to as our comparable communities. Um, and what we've done is we've looked at where we stand against those um, and where, what, where we are able to um, and where it's necessary. Uh, one of our goals has been to try to make um, what we've been calling parity adjustments um, to bring people to what we, we have defined as parity, which has been the average, the average rate of pay for those communities, the, 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 the comparable communities. Um, so what I'll do is I'll walk through um, some of uh, um, the particulars of the agreements we've reached, um, and then uh, I'll show you a document that's the last thing included, um, which basically compares uh, the fire agreement um, adjusted for FY 2016. Basically, if the agreement is uh, ratified this week by the union and then funded by town meeting, um, where they'll be uh, compared to the comparable communities. Uh, so I'll begin with uh, the Rob Robbins Library Professional Association. Um, there's really um, two funding components to that. Um, a 2% cost of living increase in each year of the agreement, uh, FY16, FY17, and FY18. Um, and then uh, they have a fixed rate for longevity. Um, a lot of the other unions, it's based on a percentage. So what we've done is we've, we've increased it um, at each increment. Um, so if it was 600, it's 800, if it's 800, 1,000, and so forth. Um, there's currently five uni uh, uh, union librarians who are receiving um, longevity. So the impact of that, that component of the agreement would be just about $1,000. The cost of living uh, increase comes in just about a dollar below 12,000, so I round it up. So you'll see the cash outlay um, for FY16 is um, $13,000. And what I've done, uh, as we've done the last time we went through um, a complete round of uh, collective bargaining negotiations, I've basically tried to show the compounding impact over time uh, of the collective bargaining agreement. Um, so that's, I don't know if we want to answer any questions particular to the librarians or uh, if you'd prefer if I move on to um, the fire agreement, which has a little bit more, uh, more detail to it. Okay, are there any questions on the library contract? Okay, the, uh, what's the impact in the first year of the $200 increase in longevity? In other words, instead of 2%, is it 3%? Or it, 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 it's about 2.2, a little less actually. So okay. it's only a $1,000 cash outlay beyond um, what we're currently paying um, longevity. So would it be the first year of 2.2% and then after that is 2 and 2? Yep. Any other questions on the library? 
See the project. And how many members are in the the, the librarians uh, association? Well, twelve. Okay, why don't you move on to the firefighters. <clears throat> um, okay, so uh, the fire union is one area uh, in which the salary study uh, um, identified a pretty significant uh, inequity in the compensation for mainly ranking officers, and ranking officers include um, firefighters are low, but not nearly as low um, as ranking officers. Um, ranking officers include uh, lieutenants, Captain, lieutenants, we have 15, captains, we have seven, and deputy chiefs, we have five. Um, so one of our, um, our goals was to get pretty creative um, in how we determined uh, the financial components of our uh, agreement in a way that they were within budget, um, but yet uh, helped us not maybe achieve complete parity uh, with the average of other communities, but make a significant step forward, uh, which I think we were able to do. Um, so, uh, the, the, again, sticking with the cost of living piece, um, there's a 2% increase, um, cost of living, uh, 15, 16, and 17, beginning of July 1 of each of those years, uh, FY16, FY17, FY18, respectfully. Um, the biggest piece is um, the implementation of a new step system. So the way um, the step system works currently is that there's three, three steps for firefighters. Uh, minimum, midpoint, and max, um, basically a $5,000 difference. So, and, the, and basically you achieve each step uh, each year. So if you're a new firefighter, you, you come in at um, step one. In a year, you go to step two. In a year, uh, your third year, you go to step three. And that's max, firefighter max. And then all the um, ranking differentials are applied to firefighter max. Um, so one thing we did is we uh, basically threw out that step system, um, recreated a step system. It's a six-step system. Um, step one is still entry level. Uh, it won't change from what it is this year, so the 2% won't apply to it. Um, step two will be, again, second-year firefighter. Um, again, won't change much from what it is right now. Um, so basically, as a result of that, by not increasing step one and two by 2%, uh, they will forever be anywhere between $1,500 and $2,000 less value of that step moving forward. Step three, which was the former max, we increased that by 2%. And then we came up th with three new steps, one beginning at 10 years, uh, which is a 1.2% increase over step three, one at 15 years, which is a 1% increase over step four, the first new step, and then lastly, after 25 years, another 1.2% um, increase. So what that was able to do is, um, really bring us to market with regard to firefighters. Um, and then basically based on those, that new firefighter max, we applied uh, the rank differentials. And to give you an idea what those are, um, lieutenant is 16% above max firefighter. Captain is 15% above um, lieutenant. And then deputy chief is 15% above captain. Uh, one thing in working with the union, I mean, we, we met, um, uh, hours and hours and hours and hours, hundreds of hours maybe with the fire union and uh, their priority in going into this was maybe, you know, slow the rate of increase for firefighters, potentially uh, increase the rate of pay for within year one for the officers because that is what the, the salary study showed to be uh, the inequities. So one thing I'd like to turn your attention to is um, a one-pager I provided um, uh, right here that uh, shows all of uh, the comparable communities to Arlington, um, what their pay would be adjusted to FY16, and what the actual pay would be for the highest paid employee at each rank within the Arlington Fire Department. So I'll walk through those very quickly. Uh, um, beginning with firefighter, uh, the highest paid firefighter based on this agreement would be uh, paid $70,551 next year. Uh, that's uh, just under $1,800 over the average. Interestingly, it's a bit of an outlier. Uh, that firefighter uh, is paid $1,000 more than any other firefighter based on a combination of some uh, components of pay. Um, so if you really called him an outlier, uh, you'd be about $700 from the average. Um, lieutenant pay, you'll see we're just at the average. 
Um, captain pay, we're still $2,100 below the average. Um, while it's still below the average, we made significant progress towards uh, reaching the average. Um, and then def deputy chief pay um, <clears throat> is uh, still $5,800 below the average. Again, we made quite a uh, deal of progress in getting closer to the average, but yet we're not there yet. Um, one of the ways we were able to do this was to do something that's uh, applied similarly in other public safety unions, which is to um, education, stip education stipends. So the way it works in the fire department is you can earn up to 60 credits, which is equivalent to an associate's degree. Um, that's the max, and the associate's degree must be in fire science, so it has to be applicable. Um, what we did is we tied that rate um, to rank. So um, a firefighter who may have his or her 60 credits um, will receive less essentially than a deputy chief who has uh, the same 60 credits. And one thing that was able to do is help us a, a little bit further close, uh, close the gap in terms of uh, what, we're, uh, <coughs> what we're trying to do in terms of achieve parity. So, um, in year one, um, the total increase, uh, considering the 2% cost of living and the market correction of the parity adjustment uh, is 3.47, above what was been appropriate or what is going to re be recommended to be appropriate in FY16. Um, in FY17 and in FY18, it's a 2% increase um, each year. And uh, going back to my memo, you'll see uh, the value uh, actually just fight salaries increase in the way it's been structured and uh, this whole idea of newcomers coming on board in the fire department making a uh, lesser rate of pay you'll see that uh, the cash <coughs> outlay is uh, 203,201 in FY16 that includes 164,998 for the cost of living in the new step system plus the 38,000 uh, for school credits Next year it's 157,000, and that encompasses all the all the impacts of this year, and then 112,000 in FY18. Um, so those are uh, basically the uh, the the <coughs> overview of both the agreements we've reached. Um, one thing that's included in the Warren article is um, cost of living increase adjustments for, like I said, M schedule, non-union, and full-time elected. Um, it's two percent. Uh, over the next three fiscal years. Uh, and that, that lastly, that leaves us $397,143 uh, that is basically set aside until we're able to reach agreement uh, with the four remaining units, uh, bargaining units, uh, in, in which case we'll obviously have to go back to uh, both the Finance Committee and the Town meeting uh, to request that it gets moved into the departmental budget. So uh, that's the overview, and uh, have to answer any questions. Okay, so this comparison is after, if the agreement is, is made? Correct. Okay. Uh, John? Yeah, I have a couple of questions about the comparison chart. Sure. Um, you said that the Arlington is for the, the highest paid in, in each free train. Right. Okay. And for the other towns, uh, is that also the case? Correct. Or is that the, yeah, okay. And do, do you know what the numbers are for Arlington before the adjustments? In other words, how, how did it look compared to the, the comparable average? Sure. Uh, you? Firefighters were between 500 and 1,000 uh, off when the study was completed um, in 2014. Uh, lieutenants were off just over 3,000. Captains were off um, just about 7,000. And deputy chiefs were uh, off just about 15,000. So below the, uh, the comparable average. Correct. Thank you. Okay, other people, Paul? Um, again, uh, the numbers for the comparable towns, is that for the FY15 pay or uh, a speculative FY16 pay? So basically what we've done, we've adjusted it. The study was done on FY, in FY14. We increased it at 2% each year and talking to the other towns, that seems to be the, pretty much the trend. Okay, thank you. Okay, other questions, Caroline? Where does this money come from? Where do we keep potential funds needed for collective bargaining? Sure. So um, when we proposed the operating budget, um, within that budget we set aside in the personnel line a, a lump sum of $700,000 in the case of this year. Okay. Um, that has just been set aside. It has been included in any departmental budget. Okay. 
Um, what will happen is if everything is approved um, here and then a town meeting, the controller will move the funds necessary into the departments, and the balance of that 700000 will be left in a, um, an account that we call, it will be called Collective Bargaining Article 20, ATM 2015, and not moved until further action by town meeting. Okay, Stephen. Yeah, just a, a question on the com comparison, Andrew. On, for the deputy chief positions, for those communities where nothing's listed, do they not have deputy chiefs and they just go right to from captain to chief, or uh, or in one case, lieutenant to chief? Okay. So, um, right, the position just doesn't exist. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, the first question is, how do you get this information? Sure. So, um, in in summer of 2012, we began meeting with all the units, to, uh, unions to define what our comparable communities would be and what, um, what data categories we'd use to measure up against other places. And uh, once we um, came to an agreement on what those would be, um, we uh, went under contract with uh, a Massachusetts firm um, that concentrates just on um, wage and classification systems, salary studies. Um, there's not a lot of players in this field in um, the state, but uh, the one we went with has a, a pretty uh, a vast array of experience. Um, and we contracted with that firm, and then they uh, developed uh, uh, basically a survey, a salary survey uh, that we as uh, the town approved, the unions approved, and then that was sent to all these communities. Um, and they responded, and basically the, the carrot there is that um, providing they respond with the data in a timely fashion that we can complete the study because I mean we we surveyed ourselves against a hundred positions so it's a big undertaking for whatever town's responding to the survey we shared the information with them uh, upon its completion so it's not only a useful tool for us but uh, for our comparable communities that participated as I understood what you said for example the Brookline number of for a firefighter is 70,943 that means there is one such firefighter that makes that amount of money, and that's more than any other such firefighter in the, that force. Is that right? G given the the, diff the the components of the air collective bargaining agreement, there could be one, there could be ten. Um, in our case, there's just I can tell you there's just one. But it's, but it's the highest. Right. Okay. Yes. The highest for the paper. I, I mean, that, that's a curious criterion. How did how did you arrive at that criterion? So the way um, the consultant presented uh, how she uh, most accurately does these things is to basically look at what the, the greatest rate of pay would be for every rank. And uh, it gets a bit complicated with the public, much more so than really any other positions in town. It gets complicated with uh, police and fire because of all the particular components, whether you get the base pay, night differential, shift differential, weekend differential, EMT, DFib, holiday pay, longevity. Yeah. I mean, there's eight or nine categories of pay. So. Um, basically, the way we approached it was let's fully load it and see what we measure, how we measure against that fully loaded. Granted, there's really only one person in Arlington right now, um, uh, an individual who's been here 30 years, that is fully loaded based on longevity, having the full 60 credits. Okay, okay Quinn? Uh, so, based on the pattern of, of agreements today, do you think 400 is going to be enough for the other unions? Or? I do. Um, interestingly enough, we, uh, we did a quick analysis today, and uh, basically everybody covered under Article 20 comes to 43% of um, uh, the town's workforce, and uh, we're just at about 43% of the 700,000, so it worked out uh, pretty well. Um, so I think we're on target. Uh, when we came up with that $700,000 number, we took a bunch of things into consideration. Um, so I think we'll get it done with everybody else. Okay, is there any other questions? Okay, and uh, I suppose, is there any other questions on the uh, M schedule, non-union, and full-time elected? Those seem pretty straightforward at 2%. Yeah. Just to uh, refresh my memory, was it two years the town employees took zeros? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so we have the collective bargaining. It's this article that you'll be voting on. Uh, uh, that'll be in the Finance Committee recommendation. Uh, is there a, a motion from the committee? So moved. 
Seconded. Okay. Uh, moved and seconded for the collective bargaining for Robbins Library, uh, firefighters, M schedule and non-union, and full-time with the numbers uh, as posed here. Is there any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of that, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so favorable action, unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Okay, the next issue is the Finance Committee budget. Um, Alan and I have been going, and, and John have been going through all the budgets and all the Finance Committee reports. I've sent everything out to the, you know, to the Western world for comments. I got comments back from several of you, so thank you very much. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, I, I was looking, you know, trying to compare, make sure everything fits. And in discussions with Peter, I realized that our budget was not going up 3.25 percent; it was going up four, four and a half percent. And uh, and uh, here we were, you know, making sure that everybody else is doing three and a quarter, and you know, we weren't even close. Now. So what Peter and I would like to recommend to you is that uh, we cut $155 from expenses. <laughs> so in 20, instead of $2,500, it's $2,345. Um, and the total budget would be $12,206, which would be a 3.23% increase. Um, I, I think that will still provide plenty of money to do our job uh, and keep us right in line with the, th with the three and a quarter. So, uh, so Peter and I would like to recommend that to you. Right. Any <laughs> questions? Yeah. Motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, favorable action. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous. Okay, two, three, four, human rights, executive director, article 33. I sent this to you uh, about a week ago, well, a few days ago actually, and I handed this out. It's on the back of the uh, arts culture budget. So, um, remember we were talking about this, um, we, we looked at the number of uh, you know actions that the human rights has to take, which is not a huge amount. We posed, we already passed a budget for them, I think, of forty-five hundred dollars. That handles all the you know sort of basic administrative work for the for the committee, uh, and the director of uh, human services basically acts as the executive director. And, um, and, and we thought it would be good if if just the board of selectmen could. Uh, approve the uh, uh, approve the manager's recommendation to appoint her as the executive director, uh, as the bylaws state, and the issue would be solved. Um, for reasons uh, that, that are a little bit of a mystery to me, and uh, uh, the board of selectmen decided not to do that. Uh, so I, I put together uh, a vote. You got to take a vote. That's you know an appropriation on it. Uh, that's before you now. Um, voted that the board of selectmen investigate the position of executive director, human rights commission, report its findings. The next annual town meeting, the board should determine the need for the position, whether its position or duties can be handled by the existing member of the human services staff. If the board determines the position is not needed for the commission to fulfill its responsibilities. They're requested to submit necessary amendments to the bylaws that uh, eliminating the requirement, and then I give a little comment there. And uh, so, you know, they're, they're sort of the head of this. We put it back to them. They either uh, come back with a new solution next year, um, but it, it seems to me to be a reasonable solution to the issue uh, on that. So with that, I, I recommend uh, this vote under 33 with its comment. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, Peter? Um, in the past, I've run into a problem with the uh, uh, directing uh, other parts of the town. The town meeting apparently has some limitations on <coughs> what they can direct. You, you, you can get around, I don't know whether that applies to board of selectmen or not, but you can get around it by saying, by softening that. Yeah, I requested. 
Professor requested. Ms. Bo uh, Where? That the Board of Selectmen investigate the position of the Board's finest name. <coughs> uh, the town meeting, the request from Madison. How about that the Board of Selectmen is requested? Is requested. Yeah, is requested. The, the town meeting requests the Board of Selectmen. <coughs> well, it's a, yeah, it's town meeting asking them, not us. Okay, so the, the Board of Selectmen is requested to investigate the position of the Executive Director, blah, blah, blah. What is I requested to submit. Okay, is that, that, that yeah, sound reasonable, Peter? I think so. Okay. Any other discussion? John? It doesn't sound as though it's complete. In other words, it says the board should determine the need for such a position and whether this position and its duties can be handled by an existing member of the human service staff. Mm -hmm. If the board determines this position is not needed, blah, 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 it could, they could determine that it is needed, right? Yeah, it's a right. Can't be handled, right? Not and then they, then they, they, they just name the person. put in appropriation. Yeah. Request. You don't have to change the bylaw. So we just we just won't worry about that. Let, let them. You're, you're not going to say it. In other words. Well, they, they, if if they decide that it, after researching that it can be appointed, that it can be done by a human services staff member, then they could go ahead and appoint that person to serve in this position. Uh -oh. I mean, they have that authority now. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, Paul. Do we know what position the selectmen have taken on Article 33? I, I don't think they have. Oh, it's, it's an appropriation it's article, so I don't think uh, you know they haven't they haven't taken any position. Okay. Well, there's another article that there's. Yeah, there's another article back in their side that deals with the town, but it's not an appropriation article. It's a selectman policy issue. Okay, motion's been. Uh, Made and seconded for to Article 33 motion uh, as presented. Uh, all those in, Actually, in favor? We, I'm, we, I'm sorry, Dean. Do you want to start again because we amended it? It's not as presented. It says we adjusted it to the oranges. Oh, just adopted as amended. Okay. I'll accept that as a friendly amendment. Yes. <laughs> okay, so the Board of Selectmen is requested to. Got to remember to put that in. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of adopting the vote as amended, Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Unanimous. Okay, that's four, five. Uh, uh, special education. Um, you remember when the school committee was here, they had, uh, the, the superintendent mentioned uh, that it's their intention to uh, take any surplus monies they had and uh, put that into the Special Education Stabilization Fund. Uh, at which point I sort of grabbed my warrant and went through it quickly because I couldn't remember such an article. Well, after getting home and researching it a little bit more thoroughly, no, there was no article. Uh, so I talked with the controller and I talked with the town council and the controller really didn't think we could use the budgets to do it. Um, and uh, both of the other stabilization fund articles that are in there are really very specific in the warrant. You know, one is specifically the long range uh, stabilization fund and the other is specifically the override stabilization fund. Um, so I, I was talking with the superintendent um, and I made the suggestion that why don't you, uh, we could increase the reserve fund by $200,000, which actually has been one of your suggestions, John. and that the board, and of course what that would do is draw down the fiscal, you know, money going into the fiscal stability fund. And then the school department promises to turn back at least $200,000 to free cash. So, you know, we lose a little money on the fiscal stability fund, but we increase the free cash, so it's, it's a wash. And then next year, at their request, we could transfer the money to them. They could either have to use it for special education, or they can, Next year, make sure they put the Warren article in and transfer it into that. Um, and since I think most people are in favor of the school having reserves for special ed, mm -hmm. since it's such a volatile issue, um, I uh, 
um, make this recommendation that we increase the reserve fund. Uh, we should add a we'll add a comment on that that you know uh, it's been increased as a reserve for special education in the schools, uh, and then the school department promises to get back you know at least two hundred thousand back into the uh, um, into that. They were hoping to do more. Unfortunately, I guess May is a very uh, April and May is very busy on the special education front, so they're just not sure exactly how much. Um, theoretically, it's possible for them to come back and like the first week in May and say, we've got 300,000 we can do and we could amend the motion uh, first here and of course and then in town meeting. So uh, I'd like to recommend that we increase the reserve fund by 200,000 uh, to be set aside for special education. Uh, Based on the on the school department's promise on the uh, free cash. So moved. Second. Okay. So moved and seconded. Is there any questions, Paul? So your proposal in the email was to reduce the um, contribution to the override stabilization fund by that two hundred thousand. That's right. Why don't we just? Well, we're going to get to the override stabilization fund in a minute, and um, in the uh, if it. I sort of, uh, it's already in here, so we have that tied in. So we'll vote on the override stabilization fund in a minute. Why don't we just take $200,000 more out of free cash? Because that $200,000 is going to come back on July 1st anyway. So we'll be exactly with free, at free cash, exactly where we plan to be with free cash. And then we can record? keep the same contribution to override stabilization as we had planned. Well, we gotta we gotta do another vote anyway, because you have to vote to redo free cash or you vote to do the override stabilization fund, uh, which we have to do anyway. So, um, What's free cash right now? I guess that's the way I've told everybody. I thought that we, we could do it. It's um, but how would the free cash approach work in sixteen? No, no, it's what the, the the $200,000 they are not spending this year will just flow into free cash on June 30th. As, and then, as will any and that, other money that they don't spend. June 30th is 16. No, no, this year. No, you yeah. have to certify free cash after the fiscal year closes. You it's certify, flowing, but it's <laughs> you certify in November of 15 right. For use beginning July 1 of okay, so that's 16. It takes a year then. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so the money that the departments, that any department does not spend in 2015 does not get counted as free cash? It does not. It doesn't get certified until November, right, Al? The free cash certification. Well, it gets certified so, you know, someplace in the fall and then gets used in the next year in, fis in fiscal. 17. 17. Skips here because a lot of bookkeeping goes on during the summer. Right. So, so, so what I'm saying is, uh, accomplishes essentially the same thing. Uh, it means that as of November, when they certify, we will have exactly the same amount of free cash as we plan to if they uh, weren't doing this two hundred thousand dollar thing at all. It sort of goes away from you know using half our free cash every year, which I. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, yeah, we have, it sort of has that sort of policy that we've had. Um, I mean, I guess if we if we're earning the same amount of interest on our money in free cash that we're earning on override stabilization, it's the same difference. It's moved. Yeah. Uh, yes, they're both it, general funds. Yeah. The, the amount of money that you're earning is is fairly right. trivial anyway, so I don't think it makes that much difference. Uh, you're right, it does the same thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the only thing is, I think the school department and the chairman of the school department right now would be happier if we had the money and we could transfer it, because it's guaranteed they're going to get it. Oh, no, I'm, it's no question that we put the 200000 into the reserve fund. Yeah. It's a question of what other part of the budget do we take it out of to put it in the reserve fund for next year? Take it out of free cash, or do we take it out of the override stabilization fund? I get you. How often? 
Um, so it's not, yeah, it's not the vote on the reserve. He's just you know wondering where it comes from. Uh, Carolyn. How often do we end up dipping into free cash as opposed to the stabilization fund in an emergency? Uh, a little, once more please. How often do we dip into free cash if something happens like say the microburst or some other emergency or unforeseen cost? Well free cash we, ba we basically have over the years just used half of it in, you know, to be used against the budgets. Uh, the and the when fiscal stability fund basically has the same, performs the same function. Right. When you can't dip into either without a vote at town meeting. Right. right? Like a reserve okay. fund. All right. Yeah. Pool, so but right. You can't just dip into it. Okay. Yeah. So we're not taking out of the reserve yeah, The only fund. flexible place is the reserve fund. The reserve right. fund. We're adding it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody else? I guess the, mo the, the motion now is to well, motion we're looking at now is, is to increase the reserve refer, reserve fund to a million two. Is there any discussion on that? Okay, I think has motion been made. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Second. Motion's been made to increase the reserve fund by a million two. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Uh, so that's favorable action. Unanimous. Okay, and that takes care of item five. Item six, okay, so go to your summary page. Which has these votes all baked in. Okay, so you can see, basically, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, Alan, zeroed out override stabilization fund. And therefore, what's remaining is 2,782,763. So in other words, that's the money remaining over, that's the money that would go into the override stable, that we vote to go into the override stabilization fund. Uh, and that already takes into account it, the the million two for the reserve fund, the three thousand one sixty for the fund for the cultural fund. All the budgets are done. You modify the FinCom, right? Yeah, the FinCom cut. So everything is done. What we have to do is appropriate two million seven eighty two seven sixty three into the override or fiscal stability stabilization fund. Now, you know, unless um, you, you'd like to do with the free cash, in which case then we take up the, the free cash vote, uh, reconsider it, and put it there and, and adjust by this by 200,000. Um, this would be just one vote on it. You know, we've got plenty of time, so. Okay, so does anybody have any questions on, the, on this? Ben? Was there any plan on the snow deficit? Just a plan in place for the snow deficit? Are we just hoping that we'll get reimbursed from the feds? Or? Uh, right now, okay, that was a good question. I should have, uh, uh, I had planned in the reserve fund, hold on a sec. I had set aside, we had 80,000 set aside for the fire department retiree buybacks. Uh, do you, Paul, do you have any more feedback on that? Yeah, actually it's gotten a little worse. <laughs> oh. an, an additional firefighter is planning to retire before the end of the fiscal year. Okay. Um, it, it got the email, I'm sorry I forgot to bring that up. So what kind of money is that we're we talking about? Uh, I think another $20,000. Okay, so let's say a hundred. So, Okay, so we got a hundred thousand. You know, this hasn't been voted. This I just sort of set it aside, and then I've got five hundred thousand for uh, snow and ice, and I think that means the the manager, you know, still has to come up with some additional funds, and we've got about a hundred and fifteen thousand left. So I think between the five hundred thousand and the additional money that the uh, manager is going to have to transfer from other budgets, uh, and then we still have a hundred and fifteen thousand in reserve. Uh, I, I think we're in good shape there.
Uh, Alan? We'll just mention that whatever we vote might have to be tweaked when the House budget comes out oh, right. Wednesday morning. Yeah, the, the House, House budget uh, comes out Wednesday morning, uh, and we're going to tweak that. Uh, so we'll, we'll be tweaking this fiscal stability fund either up or down, depending on how the House Ways and Means Committee uh, comes out. Um, I'm hope, we're all hoping that they basically go with the governor's numbers, um, and we'll see how that goes. Paul? Do we want to come up with a number for a Ruth Lewis buyout that we might have to do from reserve fund? Uh, Maybe as high as a snow and ice level. <laughs> It will, uh, will that roll into next year? You know, I think, I'm trying to remember now, we had set aside funds in a, uh, a fund uh, because of the uh, five and two percent uh, pay raises, you know, they accumulate to a 21. And I think Ruth has been here long enough that she'd probably qualify. So we have that fund. Uh, why don't I ask Carolyn, uh, Carol uh, Cole, tomorrow, uh, boy, uh, tomorrow about a buyback, buyout. But that's not this year. Of Ruth Lewis. And if funds left in that account. And what's the name of the account again? Something along the lines of. Okay, Carolyn, you want to? Can you do that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought you were asking me to. Sorry. Okay, no, I was. Okay, yeah, it? so if you could call Carolyn's boy. Ask her about the buyout for the Ruth Lewis uh, buyout and find out what that, that's going to cost us. And then I'll check with accounting. I'll check with accounting on that account. Okay. It was uh, back in 85, there was a 5% because there was a zero raise, you know, and in 91 or 92, there was a 2%. And uh, so 95. 05, 30 years. Yeah, she probably qualifies for the uh, for the 21 percent. Uh, okay, so if you could if you could check that out and, and email it okay. uh, to me, I'd appreciate that. Yes. Up until this, you started talking about Ruth Lewis, I thought we were talking about FY15. Well, the question came up about the. Uh, she, she's retiring next year. Well, she's retiring in May. Oh, in May? I'm sorry. Okay, so the question came up on the whole reserve fund. I, I, I thought it was later. <coughs> yeah. Uh, so after the fire department, do, do you have a sense of when they'll know, have a more exact figure that um, they can't cover? He, he's, he seems to, he's looking at it every month depending upon overtime. So, um, He's, he's optimistic because he has five new firefighters, so he believes he will have less overtime than they initially thought, but he's monitoring it month by month and sent, sent an email every month uh, to Ken and me. Um, okay. Status. So uh, anyway, after the 500, we vote, we vote the, that. We have 115 left in the reserve fund. Uh, and then... Uh, Sometimes we just take it out of next year's money. I, I uh, you know, we've hit the situation before. Um, then eventually it's the manager's problem to come up with the money. <laughs> okay, any other questions on the fiscal stability fund? Uh, do I have a motion? You mean the override stability? I'm sorry, the override fiscal stability fund. Uh, 2,782,763 to be modified by Alan and I based upon the House Ways and Means Committee numbers on Wednesday. So moved. Okay, moved and second? Second. Any discussion? 
Okay, all those in favor of 2,782,763 into the Fiscal Stability Fund, uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Action unanimous. And just one note, uh, I, I dug out the long range projection that the manager gave us on February 4th, and that, it was at that time a little less than this, so we're, we're doing well. We're doing okay. And uh, I think the big reason for that is the governor, uh, you know, recommendation. So hopefully uh, the House will uh, support that. And I think if the House does, I think the Senate will, but that's, I've been, mildly wrong in my political forecasts of the past. Okay, that is the end of my agenda. Is there any other business before the committee? I think uh, uh, the goal is that we're going to go to print on Wednesday. Either Alan or I will pick them up at the printer on Thursday morning if they could do it. We're going to walk over, we're going to get them down to uh, the selectman's office on early Thursday morning as we can. And they're going to stuff it together with the Board of Selectmen report and the redevelopment report. And they're all going out together for the first time in life forever. <laughs> uh, if anything goes wrong with that, they'll be on the seats of the town meeting when they, when they first come in. Uh, but it, it's a combination of a smaller warrant and the timing of, the, of everything. So I think that will be great. Um, the first uh, meeting of the finance, the next meeting of the finance committee will be 7:30 in the uh, Lions hearing room. Right. Uh, before town meeting, we will meet a half hour at 7 7:30 every night of town meeting, which hopefully will be again predictions now of five nights. We'll see how that goes. Gloria, are we are we posted for all that? Uh, the room is booked. I will post soon. Okay, and. Uh, I can't, hopefully I haven't missed anything, but I think I've got, we've gotten it all. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Uh, I'd like to...